All right, time for the scores and thoughts for week 14 of the NFL season. Um, let's get to it. This is, It was an interesting week in the NFL. The playoff pictures are starting to get clear now. Or they're getting clearer. So, you know, that's good. Um, it's starting to get unclear. It's getting unclear with all the teams that were in it at the beginning of the seat or in the middle of the season and in the last couple of weeks, but now it's starting to get clearer. So let's get to it. Uh, let's start with the Thursday night game. The Colts beat the Titans 30 to 28 on the road. Uh, it was a very interesting game. Um, it was a very good game too. Uh, I liked this game. It was um, probably it's probably one of the better games of the week. Um, it's a close game. Colts jumped out 21 nothing, and then the Titans came back and almost won the game, outscoring the Colts 21 to nine in the second half. The Colts did enough to win the game, though. Um, Titans had poor clock management at the end of the uh, game. Poor clock management at the end of the game. They scored a touchdown with zero seconds left. And they were only they only managed to get within one. I was or within two. I was gonna say they should have just gone for two points. They gone for the two point conversion and gotten within one, so they would have made the final score look a little bit better. But it didn't happen. They just went for the extra point. So good win by the Colts. Maybe they will get into the playoffs. Maybe they won't. Who knows? I hope they do personally, because I know a couple people that are Colts fans. Bills beat the Browns 13 to six. I didn't see much of this game on Sunday. Quite frankly, I'm glad I didn't because I could just tell by the fan rating that it was crap, and I can also tell by the score. Uh, I know Jake DeLone threw another pick, um, and that the Browns lost to the Bills. I don't know how you lose to the Bills. Then again, the Bills are a fairly decent team. They just they just lose close games. So. Good win by the Bills, although it's kind of a moot point. They were out of the playoffs for a long time. Bengals lose to the... Or the Steelers beat the Bengals. I should just say that. The Steelers beat the Bengals 23-7 to at home. The Bengals have lost 10 straight. 10 straight games. Get Take a moment to let that sink in. I'm, I'm adjusting chords here, too. Take a moment to let that sink in. They lost ten. They've lost ten straight games. Ten. They've lost ten straight. How do you do that? <laughs> if you're not Carolina, how do you do that? Seriously, I, I don't get it. And they started the season two and one, and they've lost ten straight. Whatever. Uh, Marvin Lewis won't have a job by the end of the year. He may get hired by another team, but he won't have a job with the uh, with the Bengals. Jaguars beat the Raiders 38-31. to I kind of wanted the Raiders to win so that the Jaguars would stay tied with the Colts in the division. But the Colts will get a chance to redeem themselves. Uh, or get a chance to close the gap once again next week. Which is their game. It'll be uh, Jags against Colts. Uh, Colts at home. And I, I think the Colts are at home. And... If the Colts win out, they win the division. If the Jags win out, they win the division. So, But if the Jags win, they've pretty much won the division right with just two weeks left. So, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we definitely will see. But I think if the, Jag, the Jags win, they've pretty much locked the division up. Because they'll have the tiebreaker and everything. I think they'll have the tiebreaker, I'm not sure. Uh, they should have the tiebreaker, but... Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat the Redskins 17 to 16 on the road. Nah, it was a close game. Uh, it looked like the on the final drive the Redskins got five downs instead of four. But then again, it was because the officials uh, measured that a catch that was on first down was a first down. I think that's what the deal was, but that ended up being what the deal was. And then after that, you know, things happened. And when things happened, you know, things happened. And then the extra point on the game when he touched, it would have been the game time touchdown if they would have made the extra point. If they wouldn't have snapped the ball over the, over the punter's head. The holder ended up being the punter, I think. So if they wouldn't have done that, 
they would have tied the game up and the Redskins may have won. But they didn't. They snapped it over the punter, the holder's head, and that ended up screwing them up. So, yeah, that was kind of funny. It, it kind of was, actually. <laughs> it really was funny. I don't know why. But good win by the Buccaneers. Let me move that up a little bit. There we go. Falcons beat the Panthers 31-10 to on the road. Do I really need to explain this game? Yeah, the Panthers are getting the number one pick straight up. It's going to happen. There, there, There's no chance of the Panthers not getting the number one pick at this rate. There, There's absolutely no chance. I think the the Bengals may challenge them for that number one pick. But I, I, the Panthers will get it. I, it, I, I just don't understand why we're still playing football. Can we just vacate the rest of our games and move on, and let other teams play them? I, I, I don't know. Lions beat the Packers seven to three. I don't understand. The only thing notable about this game was that one, the Lions won, and two. Aaron Rodgers got knocked out of the game with a concussion, and he may not be able to go next week. That's got to suck. That has got to suck big time. I mean, seriously. Seriously. It's got to suck. Honestly. So, But, you know, the Packers still may get in the playoffs. You know, I, they're, they're out of the playoffs right now. If the season started today, they'd be out of the playoffs. But they may get in the playoffs. Who knows? Saints beat the Rams 31-13. to I kind of expected this, to be honest, because the Rams are not that great of a football team, to be honest. That's to be totally honest with you. But they're not a bad football team. I, cause I just kind of expected them to put up a little bit better of a fight against the Saints. But the Saints did what they were supposed to do. They just destroyed the, Sa- the Rams. So They destroyed the Rams. It was, it was an okay game, but whatever. Good win by the Saints. 49ers beat the Seahawks 40 to 21. I was surprised that Alex Smith did what he did at quarterback. I really did not expect Alex Smith to win the game for them. I wanted Troy Smith to start because Troy Smith is awesome because he's actually proving that he can win games at quarterback despite what everybody said about him and doubted or when they doubted him when he came out for the draft. But, eh, Alex Smith did a good job. He threw three touchdowns, I think, so no picks either. So good win by the 49ers. Patriots destroyed the Bears 36-7 on the road. About the only thing that was notable about this game, other than the Patriots just shellacking the Bears, for uh, shellacking their opponent for the third straight week, was the fact that the weather outside there was so cold. It was 26, well, it wasn't cold, cold. I mean, there's places where it can get colder, but it was 26 degrees. There was so much snow on the ground. They There was snow and ice, I think, on the tarp before they lifted the tarp on the floor, on the, not on the floor, on the field. But it settled down a little bit. It was still, it, they, they at least got it cleared out to where you could recognize the out-of-bounds lines and everything, so... That was something. So, good win by the Patriots. If this thing will scroll, that would be awesome. There we go. Alright. Last six games. Last six games. Cardinals destroyed the Broncos 43-13. I'm surprised that the Broncos didn't go to Tim Tebow. Because Kyle Orton, a.k.a. Captain Neckbeard... Just sucked ass. Seriously. it He's thrown three interceptions in the last two games. And I'm surprised that the, that the Broncos, when they were losing by 30 points to John Skelton and the Cardinals, I'm surprised they didn't go to Tim Tebow. They should have gone to Tim Tebow, but they didn't. Which, that kind of sucks. I want to see Tim Tebow win games in this league. I don't know why. I just have a soft spot for Tim Tebow. Good one by the Cardinals, though. They're still not out of it quite just yet in that NFC West. They're probably not going to make the playoffs, but they're not quite out of it. Chargers shut out the Chiefs 31 to nothing. Yeah, Chiefs with Brody Croyle versus Chargers 
with Philip Rivers, Vincent Jackson back, and all sorts of weapons at running back. I I think I'll take the cheat or the Chargers on that one. I I I just don't trust Brody Croyle. I never have and never will. Dolphins beat the Jets ten to six at home or on the road. Um. Nothing much to say about this game other than the Jets have lost their swagger. They got embarrassed by the Patriots at home 45 or on national television 45 to 3 and then they come back next week, the next week and take on a Dolphins team that's lost Chad Pennington for the year that has an in that has a guy that got injured in Chad Henney that had to at one point go to Tyler Thigpen and they cannot win the game even though on their last drive they were in position to win and on fourth down or third and fourth on second and fourth down Mark Sanchez got sacked so that tells you something that tells you something but good win by the Dolphins good win Eagles beat the Cowboys 30 to 27 on Sunday Night Football. Um, I'm rooting for the Eagles to win to get to the Super Bowl. I really am, because Mike Vick is pretty sensational story. I think Grant he did his time in jail. He came back to the NFL and is now starting quarterback. He wasn't even supposed to be a starting quarterback this season because Kevin Cobb was supposed to be the guy. Kevin Cobb obviously wasn't the guy. He, Kevin Cobb got injured, lost his job. Then Vic got injured, but Cobb came back. Mike Vic got his job back after he lo- or after he was injured, and picked up right where he left off. He's only thrown three interceptions this season, which isn't bad for with just a few games left. So, good win by the Eagles on the road. And finally, the two Monday Night Football games: Giants beat the uh, Vikings twenty-one to three in Detroit. Nothing much to say about this game. I just nothing much to say. There, there really isn't anything to say. Um, I just don't think there is. This, the only thing notable. There are only two things notable about this game. One, the fact that they had to play in Detroit because of the weather in Minnesota, and because of the fact that the Metrodome had a hole in its roof after all the snow. And two, that Brett Favre streak ends at 297. Sad face. If, if you could see my face right now, it's very sad. It's, I, I kind of, I, I also have a soft spot for Brett Favre. Because Brett Favre is one of the best, if not the best quarterback to ever play at the position. Granted, he's a bit of a, he's a bit of a, a guy that t- kind of takes too long with his decisions on whether or not he's going to come back. But, still, you have to admit, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame when he retires. He's going. He's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer because he's won a Super Bowl ring. He's got all the records. He's got the starting streak record. He's got all the passing records that you could think of. I mean, you don't. There's there's just no comparison to what he's got. He's got every passing record in the book, just about. Yes, that does include interceptions, but he's got all the important records: touchdowns, receiving yards, completions, attempts, games started consecutively. Games started consecutively, including playoffs. And he's won a Super Bowl ring. So that tells you something. Just, I really hope Brett Favre gets into the... I really hope Brett Favre, the first year he gets in, he's uh, eligible for the Pro Football Hall of Fame, that he gets in. Because he deserves it. And then finally, the Ravens beat the Texans on a thriller on on Monday night, 34-28. I watched this game down to the end, and I was shocked at the end when the Texans, down by two scores, came back down by 15 points. They were down by 15 points at the end, at the start of the fourth quarter. They came back, scored 15 points, including on the touchdown drive, the final touchdown drive, a sick-ass one-handed catch by Andre Johnson, where he got both feet down, both he got both feet down before he touched his hand down out of bounds. They went for two, got the two-point conversion, and then they lost. I wanted to see the Texans win so bad after that. But um, that apparently didn't happen. So, which, That sucks, but you know what can you do? 
All right, so that's the scores and thoughts for week 14. Now I'll get the prediction up for or the preview for week 15. All right, we got the the uh, preview up here for week six for for week 15. I about said week 16. Um, really, there's gonna there's not that many notable games this week. Um, there's the Eagles facing the Giants. That's notable. Saints and Ravens, those two teams are good. Um, Jaguars, Colts, that'll pretty much determine the division right there. Uh, Packers, Patriots, we'll see if that injured Packers team can come back and uh, and uh, do something against the Patriots, which that, that probably won't happen. Steelers, Jets, we'll see if the Jets can get out of their slump, specifically Matt or Mark Sanchez. And that's pretty much it there. Uh, the rest of the games are just not many great games. But we'll see. So that's the scores and thoughts for week 14. I will see you all next week. Peace.